What up, what up? This is Reed, Pugilism Company, BBS, the Black Burp Sugar. Hey, y'all, help us with some subscribers. We're almost at 400. We're trying to reach the 1,000 mark. So if you would, please subscribe. Please comment. Give that bell icon a love tap to receive notifications. When you pull off the highway and you get to that stoplight, I'm the guy on the corner with the sign that says, We'll work for food. And by work, I mean talk boxing. And by food, I mean subscribers. I will talk boxing for subscribers. That being said, let's talk boxing. The top ranked boxing on ESPN telecast, which featured Vasil Lomachenko versus Jorge Linares. It is the highest rated cable television broadcast in 2018. Now, this is based on some metered market rating, which isn't quite the same as the peak and average viewers that we usually get to gauge this sort of thing. And with this being top rank, hell, I don't put it past Bob Brown to have created or invented or just invested in some other method to make sure that his card got more favorable ratings. But... There was a big ESPN push behind Lomachenko, so I have no doubt that it was probably the top-rated card of the year. That's not unfathomable. Madison Square Garden crowd was more than 10,000. The uh, metered market rating was 1.0, to be exact. The uh, metered market rating for the previous number one fight in 2018 on cable television was 0.9, which was Triple G versus Vonis Martirosian. Coming in third place at 0.8 is the Deontay Wilder Luis Ortiz fight. So, real good fight, heavily hyped, advertised, fan friendly. Lomachenko, he's definitely, his uh, arrow was pointing upwards. And you put 10,000 asses in seats at Madison Square Garden. That's not bad. That's not bad. He only he was in the little room prior to that. So to put 10,000 in the big room in your first outing, that's that's win-win. Oh, by the way, uh, Ray Beltran, who's also with Top Rank, his brain trust has already expressed interest in unifying with Lomachenko on that August 25th show slated for... Uh, the Forum in L.A. The next biggest show on the horizon is the Showtime doubleheader May 19th, this coming Saturday. Adonis Stevenson versus Badu Jack and Gary Russell Jr. versus Jojo Diaz. Focusing more on the light heavyweight fight, Stevenson, man, he's he's a weird dude. Like He hasn't been relevant at 175 for like the last three to five years. I know he signed with Heyman and then he took the path of least resistance. Now, here's the thing. Heyman, he allows his fighters, he's the ultimate manager. However, however aggressive they want to be in their matchmaking or however much they want to sit back and pussyfoot around, Heyman's kind of like, okay, it's your career. Here's the path. Adonis Stevenson has made no efforts, no moves to enhance himself at light heavyweight. He's played no role, been non-existent, while the Kovalevs, the Andre Wards, the Dimitri Bivos, the Sullivan Barreras, the Artur Bertabevs, all these guys are fighting frequently and in some cases fighting each other. And Adonis Stevenson is way over here in left field, just, just, just pulling opponents out of his ass, man. It's to the point like people w- would consider whoever comes out of that Russian triumvirate with Berta Biev, Kovalev, and Bivol, whoever emerges from that with all three belts would basically be considered undisputed. And that's based on Stevenson showing no inclination at all to make himself a factor in the light heavyweight mix. With all that said, I hope Badu Jack wins, but I seriously doubt that he will. 
Well, Donald Stevenson is extremely dangerous early. Badu Jack is a world-class fighter, but there's nothing special about him. And he's moving up in weight to fight Adonis Stevenson. I see that one ending within three. Unless I hear something otherwise in the next couple of days, my official prediction is Stevenson in three or less. I can only speak for myself, but I will be so, so very glad when Jeff Horn gets knocked out by Terrence Crawford. I've stated it. I've stated it in previous podcasts. My man is milking the hell out of his 15 minutes of fame. The gift decision over Pacquiao, the, the defense he made against whoever it was he fought that I didn't even care enough to watch or learn the guy's name. Coming into this fight with Crawford, man, which is June 9th at the MGM Grand in Vegas, Horn and his team, they've just they've been talking much shit to the point where it's like just shut up recognize your role like i can't wait till crawford does them just so we can be rid of jeff horn and his people and then you go back to australia and do your thing on a more of a club show level anyway what's got me irked this time what's perturbed me is that horn vows to get early respect from terrence crawford in their fight Along with that, he's questioned and doubted Crawford's injury. Like, no shit. You know, just like everyone knows, when Manny Pacquiao decided not to be on the undercard, that threw a wrench in Bob Arum and Top Rank's plans, so the April date was scrapped. But Horn's making it seem like, and his people are suggesting that Crawford saw that Horn was looking good in workouts and Oh, he needs more time to prepare for Jeff Horn. And that's, uh, you know, again, I just can't wait for Crawford to put hands on Jeff Horn. He's going to beat the brakes, the brake pads, the calipers, the rotors, and any other parts associated with brakes. He's going to beat all of that off Jeff Horn on June 9th. Another, uh, sidebar on that fight this espn plus app the live streaming deal that they've concocted to uh use this fight as the experimental the trying out of a crawford fight i guess the uh mir khan fight with agreco was the very first one but they're gonna try this again with crawford against horn It seems to me that you would use a higher profile fighter within your stable, i.e. the highest profile fighter in your stable, which at this point probably has to be Vasil Lomachenko. Maybe Manny Pacquiao is a close second. Either way, you would use one of those two for the launch of some experimental uh, tech-savvy type shit, which just... Right off the bat, me being an old school dude, I'm already turned off. If I can't flip the channel to ESPN or ESPN2 or ESPN News or something to that effect, I mean, I already got enough ESPN channels. I don't need to subscribe to some app to watch one of the best fighters in the world, Terrence Crawford, fight. And it's it's a head-scratching decision because while Crawford is must-see TV, He hasn't proven to be a draw outside of Nebraska. But leave it to Bob Arum to pick Crawford for this uh, launch, this test launch. And he'll also hold it against Crawford and say, oh, he doesn't sell. Just like he put Guillermo Rigondeau into unfavorable situations and then blamed the fighter because he wasn't selling tickets. Just like he did with Floyd Mayweather many years ago. Oh, he he can't sell. He can't sell flies to shit. Right, and as soon as he left you, Floyd Mayweather became the biggest moneymaker probably two or three times over in the history of the sport. I don't want to say top-ranking Bob Arum are racist, but they have some questionable... At best, their tactics are questionable in regards to their treatment of black fighters. I was stunned when Shakur Stevenson signed with him. 
Uh, I hope this ESPN Plus app thing works, the streaming subscription. But I'm not, I'm not subscribing to this shit, man. It'll be on YouTube some kind of way, or I'll have a partner that gets it, and I'll go watch it at his house. But I don't, I'm, I, no, sorry. Before I get out of here, uh, Clinello Alvarez has lost his WBC ranking. He did so for failure to enroll in WBC's clean boxing program. Now, this is all, this is your boy, Reed the Black Burp Sugar. I just wanted to throw that out there, but this is all just lip service on the part of the WBC. If and when Canelo enrolls into this clean boxing program, which he'll do probably around September or late August, that's when he'll regain his WBC ranking. What this tells me is that Canelo, Clinello, I'm sorry, he was cheating before. He's going to continue to cheat now, and then he will cycle off of the banned substances when it's time for him to reapply for his boxing license. And that's fine. I was a big fan of Canelo leading up to this fight with Triple G. Wasn't a big fan of how he fought three extra guys and put it off, but it was what it was. Then the fight itself wasn't bad. But his behavior post-fight leading up to the rematch... It makes me want to start a Jaime Munguil bandwagon. That's it for today, y'all. This is Reed, Blackbird Sugar. Again, leave comments. Please subscribe. And get that bell icon a love tap for notifications. Love and appreciate y'all's support, man. Peace.